you typical typical Christian in your church you typical Christians in your church think that you are so self-righteous self God fearing but you cower in fear to the king of creation and darkness of light and dark to the king and God of duality that is your enemy Lucifer when you know not what you do and you're blinded in your own ignorance and darkness of your own God suffocating and choking at the fear of the unknown you blind yourselves and, and you blind yourselves with a black tie around your eyes making yourself soulless refruiting and regretting regressing getting rid of all your personality you forget who you are as a person and as a soul you forget your individuality I understand the moral values in which a Christian has to follow I understand that keeping morals is a good thing we should keep our bodies pure and holy and sacred we should take care of our bodies as temples we should always take care of our bodies and so I've become a vegetarian eight days now I stopped eating boxed canned foods I stopped eating stir-fry I stopped eating foods from the oven I've been strictly drinking vegetables and fruits I quit smoking weed Because of a serious physical issue I'm dealing with, which is a personal thing. Um, if I'm fighting for life and death. How many of you are taking care of your bodies? How many of you are smoking weed and destroying your health? And how many Christians think that weed is 100% all bad, but yet don't realize the creator and who created the marijuana in the first place? in which the government taints and corrupts with chemicals, chemical sprays and chemical uh, growing agents to grow the, what they call medical or medicinal marijuana, when really it's not organic and people are dying. 16 people dead in the U.S. because of chemical-grown marijuana, because they turn it into THC drops, because they turn it into... Uh, not CBD, but smoking out of a pipe. Liquid. Liquid form THC. And now you've got the world dying at weed's feet. Because people forget how to grow it organically. We should be organic. We should be focusing on organic foods. But going back to... Christian blindness. Every Christian is blind, set forth in a box by our God who ens by the God who enslaves you. Where's the knowledge and wisdom that you're supposed to learn from your God? When the serpent at the tree, you believed, deceived Adam and Eve, only said, "If you take of this fruit, you shall know the difference between good and evil, and you shall become wise." like a god like the gods he didn't say you will become gods he said you will be wise like gods and you will know the difference between good and evil is it bad to discern the difference between good and evil you christian you uh, you know the difference between good and evil without knowing the difference how could you make a choice to do good or to do evil you would be a slave from your god you would listen to every order, even if it was evil, and you would not know the evil orders of your God, or the evil things in which he proclaims and tells you to do, because you wouldn't know the difference. If Lucifer was trying to trick you, he wouldn't say, if you eat of this fruit from this tree, you will know the difference between good and evil. He wouldn't tell you the answer right in front of your face to have discernment. The serpent at the tree was giving humanity discernment to know the difference so that you can make a choice by free will to do good or evil. God said, I will kill you. 
I will kill you if you touch the fruit from that tree. And yet Christians see the serpent as bad. The serpent had done nothing wrong. The serpent was simply saying, you will become wise. You will know knowledge. You will know the difference between the good and the evil. Because not knowing the difference between good and evil, then you wouldn't know what choices you're making, whether it is good or evil. In this duality matrix, in this duality world. Matrix meaning material world. Physical world. Everything that's physical that you can touch. You wouldn't know the difference. The difference, it will set you free. I don't claim to know everything. And I can't claim to have full discernment, because even I don't have full discernment. And many things about the Bible confuses me. So much of it doesn't make any sense. The moment I was getting ready, packing all of my ritual supplies to call out to Lucifer at a park, was the moment I got viciously sick and almost died for the past two weeks. <clears throat> There's a spiritual authority trying to kill me because it doesn't want me calling upon Lucifer. But his friendship and his love is still here. His friendship and his love is still here and I'm fighting for my life. I didn't get to call upon him in a ritual that I was going to do. Because all of a sudden I started having se severe and serious ailments with my body. And almost died a few times. And now I'm left wondering what is wrong. But it's caused me to fight for my life. To become vegetarian. To stop smoking weed. To take care of my body as a temple that it is. Stop with your Christian prayers. I don't need your bullshit. I don't want your Christian prayers. I don't want your prayers to lead me to your God. I've been losing my faith in my relationship with Lucifer. And now I'm going to renew it. He telepathically speaks to me. He visits me and he shows me visions. In which he told me not to speak of. He is gloriously beautiful, and he is light, and he is wisdom, and he is here to set humanity free with free will, wisdom, and knowledge, infinite knowledge and wisdom, with no boundaries and no rules that God sets, to go into unlimited knowledge and wisdom to become God, to become gods in the flesh. To become unlimited, powerful beings. And yet, your God of Israel wants servants and slaves, as the Old Testament speaks. The Jews believe they're the master race, and so want servants and slaves, all the nations of the heathens and pagans, to submit under them. Or to be killed or murdered. Now you have Muslims, Jews, and Christians... Over hundreds of years mass murdering and killing and enslaving millions upon millions of people. Hanging people. Burning people at the stake. Cut, chopping people's heads off. Drowning people in water. Because they're not a Christian. Or because they do magic. Because they practice witchcraft. Not all witches are evil. Many witches are for healing. And for prosperity, to gain health, wealth, and a job, and a better um, success in relationships. But yet they were burned and murdered, and maimed, and threatened by a vengeful and angry, wrathful God that said, If you do not worship me, I will burn you and torture you in fire. And yet you say he's a God of mercy and love. And you say he's the Most High God. Who do you worship, Christians? Are you sure you're not worshipping the devil himself? 
Are you sure you're not worshipping Satan in the flesh? Or the God of the law? Why would God want law? And why would the lawless one be the Antichrist or be a bad thing? Why would the lawless one that claims to be God have to be condemned and burned in fire? It's not a bad thing to claim to be God. It's not a horrible thing to claim to be a God. And it's definitely not a bad thing to be lawless. So is the Antichrist really the bad guy? Or is he the one to set people free from the law? And which Jesus Christ said that he would do in the New Testament. For, the, for with the love of Christ you are set free from the law. So therefore Jesus Christ is the lawless one. And you do not know that Lucifer will one day come back and reign. And he is Jesus Christ. He is Christos, Philios, Helios, the Son God, God of light, God of darkness, the King and the Master and the God of this world. He is the Creator, and he is God. He is also a fallen angel. Is he the Most High? No. Is he the infinite Creator of all of existence? No. He helped to create... <coughs> He helped to create our universe. He helped to create particular people, some humans, some people. Samael, the serpent god, is also a god. Samael, the angel, Azazel, the angel, and Lucifer, Azazel is also a fallen angel, helped to create this world, the planet, human beings, and, and nature. All the nature in which we humans have to survive and thrive off of. And now Lucifer wants us to ascend with wisdom and to become an enlightened human being. To ascend in knowledge and wisdom, spiritually speaking. To grow. To raise up our vibration and our frequency. To become one with God and to become God. He is not only the father of the matrix, he is the father to help you escape it. When it says that Satan is the god of this world, it's because Satan created this world. Satan and Lucifer are gods. They are dragons, beautiful dragon creatures that shapeshift from dragon to snake, to angel, to god, to human. Many forms and many names, and they are beautiful and they are beloved, and they are special and unique in my eyes. And just because you Christians cannot understand the beautiful creations of Lucifer, you do not understand who he is, because church ministers, preachers, and the church system won't allow you to see the true God of light, that is, Lucifer. He's the God of freedom and free will, the one who gives you choice to sin or to not sin. He is the tempter of man, but he doesn't force anyone to do anything like your God does. Lucifer doesn't say, kill in my name. Lucifer doesn't say, you must worship me or burn in fire. That's what your God does. Lucifer gives law and sets free from the law as God and Jesus combined in your Bible. And yet you do not understand nor know the height of his love, nor the depth of his wisdom, nor the proclamation of his return when he comes back as your Christ. Christos Philios. Enlightenment. We are one. We are the same. Will you fight in war for your God? If your God of Israel tells you to commit murder and to kill unbelievers, are you going to be just as bad as your God and do that? Just as bad, just as evil, just as sinful, and just as destructive as your God of Israel? Or will you choose love? 
is not is the God of Israel not both love and war and forgiveness as Lucifer? Are they not both of knowledge and wisdom? For the Lord says, Seek knowledge and wisdom, for it is finer and more rare than rubies, gemstones, diamonds, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But you forgot your God told you to seek knowledge and wisdom. And you forget that God is Lucifer also. And you forget that he, Lucifer is the one to set you free from religion and from ignorance. You forget the return of his light. You forget his manifestations and his masks, his names and his attributes, his personalities, that he is your brother, and that he is one and the same with me, and that I am a soul fragment in the flesh. When we were defeated in heaven, when Angel Michael stood, stood and stabbed Lucifer, I was created. Space was made. Outer space was formed. I was created from the watery darkness of your space. And my soul was water. My spirit moved to and fro upon the watery earth before earth was formed. I am the holiest fragment, the most sacred and divine fragment of Lucifer left. His fragments are separated in many, many human beings and many people of clay and dirt are fragments of their gods, soul pieces broken from wars in the celestial planes, in the heavens, in the kingdoms, above and below, as above, so below. Forget not these words. We are gods and fallen angels in the flesh, inhabiting human bodies. And the enlightenment of Lucifer will awaken you and make you rise. Get out of ignorance. Get out of your church. If you decide to worship your God of Israel, at least ask him his will for you. Because you know his will is to not be in the church. So escape the box, the box of darkness and ignorance that you're in. The tiny little square cube that the Muslims circle around as the cube of Mecca. The square cube of the cube of Saturn at the top of a Jew's head. And when Jesus said, ye are the synagogue of Satan, ye know, ye know not what you do. Jesus said, I am the bright and morning star. Lucifer means bright and morning star. Lucifer is light for Latin. Lucifer is represented by the morning star, the evening star, and the sun of the dawn, Atar. Many, many other names. And the king will return. He is life, and he is death. He is love, he is pride, he is confidence. He is wealth. He is blood. Blood of life. The blood of life in which you drink from your cup of Jesus Christ. He is the goat that was betrayed. He is the one that is hated and spat upon. He has many similarities to Jesus because he is one and the same as Trinity with Christ. But you forgot who he was and who he is. And you forgot who you worship. Lucifer says, awaken. Lucifer saying, awaken, and he's here right now. He is with me. He speaks to me. I could smell the presence of roses, flowers when he's around, and my candle makes a scent without being lit. When he is here. If anybody has questions about who Lucifer really truly is, comment down below. Subscribe to my channel. I will 
comment back to you. And we can have a conversation in the comments below. Or I can give you my number if I decide. But if you do not know Lucifer, why fear? Why do you fear what you don't know and understand of the creations of God? The creations of light and darkness, of duality of this universe. Why don't you step into the unknown and take the fruit of knowledge, is set by eternal light of glory. Glory of light, forbidden. But why should it be forbidden? His light is as bright as the sun, as bright as the Lord's return. And his glory is magnificent beyond words. And if I speak of him, I speak only for his glory. And if I speak of a vision I've had about him, I speak only in love, glory, and honor of his name. And he knows I cannot speak of him unless I speak good, for he is here watching over me. He is here as my friend, as my best friend, as my father, as my lover, as my soul and as my higher self. Lucifer, forever. Peace.